We also have numerics. This is Kupai numeric, Ariel and Shona. Ariel is the world's first GPU accelerated radio signal processing for 5G and 6G. Parabrix for genomics analysis, Monai for medical imaging, Earth 2 for weather prediction, Ku Quantum for quantum classical computer architectures and computer systems, Ku equivariance and Ku tensor contraction of tensor uh, mathematics, uh, Megatron, then Tensor RT LLM, and then now lately, this brand new operating system for large AI factories, Dynamo. QDF for data frames like Spark and SQL. Structured data has, can be accelerated as well. QML, classical machine learning. Warp, a framework for, a Pythonic framework for describing CUDA kernels. QOPT, mathematical operations, optimizations, things like traveling salesperson, uh, the ability to optimize highly constrained large number of uh, variables uh, type of problems like supply chain optimization. This is an incredible success. I'm very excited about Kuopt. Uh, QDSS and QSparse for sparse structure simulators. Uh, those are used for CAE and CAD, fluid dynamics, uh, finite element analysis, incredibly important for EDAs and CAE industry. And then of course, QLitho, one of the most important libraries for computational lithography. Mask making takes, could easily take a month. And that mask making process is extremely computationally intensive. And now with QLitho, we could, ex we could accelerate that computation by 50 times, 70 times. As a result, this is gonna set the, the stage, open the world for applying AI to lithography in the future. We have great partners here. TSMC is using QLitho uh, quite extensively. ASML, Synopsys, excellent partners working with us in QLitho. So the, the libraries themselves is what makes it possible for us one domain of application after another domain of science, after do, another domain of physics, to be able to accelerate those applications. But it also opens up markets for us. We look at particular regions and particular markets and we say that area could really be important to transform to the new way of doing computing. We're doing that with quantum computing. Quantum computing is still at the noisy, intermediate state, intermediate scale quantum, called NISC. However, there are many, many good applications we could already start to do. And so we're excited about that. We're working on a, class, a quantum classical or quantum GPU computing platform. We call it CUDA-Q, working with amazing companies around the world. GPUs could be used for pre-processing and post-processing, for error correction, for control, and so, in the future, I predict that all supercomputers will have quantum accelerators, all have quantum QPUs connected to it. And so a supercomputer would be a QPU with QPUs and GPUs and some CPUs. And that would be the representation of a modern computer. So working with a lot of great companies in this area. And notice almost everything NVIDIA builds are gigantic. And the reason for that is because we're not building data centers and servers, we're building AI factories. This is CoreWeave. This is Oracle Cloud. The power density of each rack is so great, they have to, they have to uh, uh, put them further apart so that we, the power density could be distributed. But really, in the end, we're not building data centers, we're building AI factories. And this is the XAI, Colossus factory. This is Stargate. Four million square feet. Four million square feet, one gigawatt. And so just... Think about this factory here. This one gigawatt factory, this one gigawatt factory is probably going to be about, you know, 60 to 80 billion dollars. Out of that 60 to 80 billion dollars, the electronics, the computing part of it, these systems are 40, 50 billion dollars of it. And so these are gigantic factory investments. The reason why people build factories is because, you know, you know the answer. The more, you, the more you buy, <laughs> say it with me, the more you buy, the more you make. We're announcing NVIDIA NVLink Fusion. NVLink Fusion is so that you can build semi-custom AI infrastructure. 
not just semi-custom chips, because those are the good old days. You want to build AI infrastructure, and everybody's AI infrastructure could be a little different. Some of you could have a lot more CPUs, and some of it could have a lot more NVIDIA GPUs, and some of it could be somebody's semi-custom ASICs. And those systems are so insanely hard to build. And they're all missing this one incredible ingredient, this incredible ingredient called NVLink. NVLink so that you could scale up these semi-custom systems and build really powerful computers. And so today we're announcing the NVLink Fusion. NVLink Fusion kind of works like this. This is the NVIDIA platform, 100% NVIDIA. You got NVIDIA CPU, NVIDIA GPU, the NVLink switches, the networking from NVIDIA called Spectrum X or InfiniBand, Nix, network inter interconnects, switches, and all of the entire system, the entire infrastructure built end to end. Now, of course, you can mix and match it if you like. And we now today make it possible for you to mix and match it even at the compute level. This would be what you would do using your custom ASIC. And we have great partners, I'll announce in a second, who are working with us to integrate your special TPU or your special ASIC, your special accelerator. And it doesn't have to be just a transformer accelerator. It could be an accelerator of any kind that you would like to integrate into a large scale-up system. We create an NVLink chiplet. It's basically a switch that abuts right up to your chip. There's IP that will be available to integrate into your semi-custom ASIC. And then once you do that, it fits right into the compute boards that I mentioned, and it fits into this, M this ecosystem of an AI supercomputer that I've shown you. Now maybe what you would like is you would like to use your own CPU. You've been building your own CPU for some time, and maybe your CPU has built a very large ecosystem, and you would like to integrate NVIDIA into your ecosystem. And now we make it possible for you to do that. You could do that by building a, your custom CPU. We provide you with our NVLink chip-to-chip -chip interface into your ASIC. We connect it with NVLink chiplets, and now it connects and directly abuts into the Blackwell chips and our next generation Rubin chips. And again, it fits right into this ecosystem. This inc incredible body of work now becomes flexible and open for everybody to integrate into. And so your AI infrastructure could have some NVIDIA, a lot of yours. Now the amazing thing about human robotics is not just the fact that if it worked, it could be quite versatile. It is likely the only robot that is likely to work. And the reason for that is because technology needs scale. Most of the robotic systems we've had so far are too low volume. And those low volume systems will never achieve the technology scale to get the flywheel going far enough, fast enough, so that we're willing to dedicate enough technology into it to make it better. But human or robot, it is likely to be the next multi-trillion dollar industry. And the technology innovation is incredibly fast. And the consumption of computing and data centers, enormous. But this is one of those applications that needs three computers. One computer is an AI for learning. One computer is a simulation engine where the AI can learn how to be a robot in a, uh, in a virtual environment. And then also the deployment of it. Everything that moves will be robotic. As we put these robots into the factories, remember, the factories are also robotic. Today's factories are so incredibly complex. This is Delta's manufacturing line, and they're getting it ready for a robotic future. It is already robotics and software defined, and now in the future, there'll be robots working in it. In order for us to create robots and design robots that operate in, in, as a fleet, as a team, working together in a factory that is also robotic, we have to give it Omniverse to learn how to work together. And that digital twin, you now have a digital twin of the robot, you have a digital twin of all of the equipment, you're gonna have digital twin of the factory. Those nested digital twins are gonna be part 
of what Omniverse is able to do. This is Delta's digital twin. This is WeWin's digital twin. Now, while you're looking at this, if you're not, if, if you look at it too closely, you think that it's in fact photographs. These are all digital twins. They're all simulations. They just look beautiful. The image just looks beautiful, but it, it, they're all digital twins. This is Pegatron's digital twin. This is Foxconn's digital twin. This is Gigabyte's digital twin. This is Qantas. This is Wistron's. TSMC is building a dig digital twin of their next fab. As we speak, there are $5 trillion of plants being planned around the world. Over the next three years, $5 trillion of new plants. Because the world is reshaping, because reindustrialization moving around the world, new plants are being built everywhere. This is an enormous opportunity for us to make sure that they build it well and cost effectively and on time. And so putting everything into a digital twin is really a great first step and preparing it for a robotic future. Taiwan at the center of the most advanced industry, the epicenter where AI and robotics is gonna come from, it stands to reason that this is an extraordinary opportunity for Taiwan. This is also the largest electronics manufacturing region in the world. And so it stands to reason that AI and robotics will transform everything that we do. And so it's really quite extraordinary that for one of the first times in history, that the work you do has revolutionized every industry, and now it's going to come back to revolutionize yours. At the beginning, I said that GeForce brought AI to the world. And then AI came back and transformed GeForce. You brought AI to the world. AI will now come back and transform everything that you do. It's been a great pleasure working with all of you. Thank you. As you know, we have been growing. And all of our partnerships with you have been growing. The number of engineers we have here in Taiwan have been growing. And so we are growing beyond the limits of our current office. And so I'm gonna build them a brand new NVIDIA Taiwan office. And it's called NVIDIA Constellation. I'm very pleased to announce that NVIDIA Constellation will be at Beitou Xiling. Hello, we just from Computex 2020年跟三月份我们理解的基本上都一样但有两个事情他今天讲的特别突出第一个是 当然还有电力的需求，虽然在这整场整场这个Computex的这个演讲里呢，虽然还没有提到什么重点，但是能源一直在涨，云豹能源今天也涨，大概一个礼拜前的听证会呢，那个OpenAI的执行长Sam 第一个投资方向，你可以往常看NVIDIA，它的野心跟它建造的规模会很大，因为今天的演讲它有提一个重点哦，它说未来这些AI工厂呢，呃，建造的成本一个大概六百到八百亿，这是它的说法，而其中的
辉达在台湾的总部会即将在北市科，呃，去进驻。那那个图都画出来，有空自己可以去看。也就是说呢，他其实是很想要把台湾作为一个很重要的基地，从他三番两次过来，从他把这个海外总部设在这个北市科的从化区。各位为什么是在北市科啊？我过去研究过北市科的地哦，他是把这个电网啊各方面的基础建设做的台北市唯一最好的一个地方。现在是空无一片，所以未来这些需求在那里都会发生。高通、明天的联发科、边缘运算，这个会更重要。那如果我有看到呢，再跟你分享。